Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Uh, today we've got another meltdown episode for you. We're going to be taking a look at the Smith & Wesson m and 15-2 Sport. Um, this is a gun that we've gotten a ton of requests from people to see how well it uh, fares in meltdown. Uh, this is a very, very popular AR-15 and there's a ton of them out there. They're very affordable, uh, considered by many to be definitely in the entry level category, but still very decent quality. Um, actually has kind of a relatively heavy barrel, uh, considering it uh, doesn't have like the, the, the kind of tried and true M4 cut that you'll see on a lot of M4 profile barrels. Uh, it does have a, I wouldn't really call it a government cut on the barrel, but it does have a bit of a lightning cut under the hand guards. It's got just standard uh, AR-15 car style hand guards, uh, which is not a big deal. We are going to drop this on a registered machine gun lower. Uh, this is a machine gun lower that was provided uh, kindly by Quiet Riot Firearms, uh, McDonough, Georgia here. Uh, they always bring this down. And I'm going to tell you something really funny about this real quick, is uh, the hammer pin on this gun was actually broken through like the last uh, couple of meltdowns. It was broken the entire time, but it kept working. So if that tells you anything, uh, the, the hammer pin was actually broke right in half. Uh, we did remedy that. It has been repaired, but this is the same exact lower we use in all the meltdown videos. Um, also, you notice I'm wearing a slightly bit of different attire. Uh, this is a riot suit from Haven Gear. Uh, it's actually a police uh, and military riot suit, for, uh, actual tried and true riot suit. And uh, this is going to help protect me from burns and any uh, potential bad things that could happen here. Uh, we are going to be firing this gun until it destroys itself. That's the whole point of a meltdown. So I am in this Haven Gear protective uh, riot gear, which is going to help in the event of any type of uh, accident or anything that could happen. Uh, we're just going to get to it. Guys, the benchmarks that have been set forth so far, we've melted down a ton of random ARs and AR uppers. And the whole point of doing this is we just really want to see like what these things can take in an extreme amount of punishment. We're going to run the same exact order of ammunition. So everything's the same as the previous videos. Um, you know, we had the Faxon upper, which was the first one we did with the stainless barrel there. And it ran a pretty dang good long time. Uh, we've done everything from piston uppers. We've done a couple of factory guns like the POF that went really well. Uh, you know, we did a variety of lesser expensive uppers. You know, we had a PSA that we did. And I'm thinking that the upper on this uh, M&P is definitely going to be pretty comparable to the PSA in terms of entry level price and features. So let's do it. I'm going to melt it down. All right, guys, a couple of things that I forgot to mention in the intro before we get started. Uh, one, I did buy this uh, upper and actually the complete rifle uh, through Michelle up at Moss Pond. And this uh, video is actually by request. Uh, a cop buddy of mine flipped his patrol car and got hurt pretty bad and he's been bedridden for a good minute. He's gonna be healing up and he requested this video specifically. So we're making this video for him and I hope he enjoys it. Now, we're gonna get after it. Uh, another thing I wanna mention, this uh, gun had an AR-15 carrier in it. I did have to put a PSA machine gun carrier in this uh, upper to get it to run on this machine gun lower. So we are not running the M&P carrier uh, in the gun. We're running a PSA uh, machine gun carrier. All right, here we go. Enough talking. All right. All right. It's 
about to get fun. All right. That gas tube is getting hot, hot, hot. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. Baby! Woo! She's getting warm, people. A little bit. What's an empty mag on the table? I think she's hot, guys. What do you think? Well, she's running, boys and girls. Come on, guys, help me out here. A rate of fire change for sure. Try not to get burned here. Well, she's going. All right, she quit. Uh, what the heck? Can we try again? Okay. Well, I think the gas tube went. I'm gonna try one more shot. Yep. All right, guys. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Look at that. That sucker went the long haul for a DI gun in that price range. Now, granted, that barrel's uh, <laughs> out of spec a little bit, and it's definitely cooked. But, man, that's pretty impressive. We're going to let it cool off and uh, stop burning in my face here, and we'll see what's going on. Check it out. Well, color me impressed. That is probably the craziest thing I've seen in quite a while. We were all placing bets, just thinking, oh man, there's no way the MP Sport is going to last, you know, not even nearly as long as anything else we've ever done. It actually wound up going a pretty insane amount of rounds. How many did we get a round count? 820. 820. All right. 820 rounds of full auto fire. Guys, that is unbelievable for a gun that costs this, this cheap amount of money. I mean, they're, they're definitely kind of on the entry level end of the spectrum 
uh, the sports are, but they are, as you can see, pretty dang good guns. I mean, there's no amount of semi-auto fire that will ever stop this gun from running as long as you're not getting too crazy with it. Um, these things will go the long haul. Um, we've got some theories about what finally stopped the gun, okay? And, you know, I, I don't have a way to, like, cut the barrel open right now and, like, look at the gas ports in, in a lot of detail. The gas tube itself appears to be intact, okay? The bolt still has plenty of travel, works just like it needs to. Uh, everything looks relatively normal with the gas system. The barrel did begin to droop a little bit. Our brake our muzzle device wound up working its way off a bit and it kind of found itself in a position about like right there and those expanding gases tended to push the barrel over as the barrel warmed up it caused the barrel to kind of skew over to the side that was the opposite of the direction that the gases were leaving the muzzle so that's to be expected because that's what this device does I mean it directs the gases upwards normally when it's locked into place and keeps the barrel rise down okay what ended up happening there near the end, and I'm just kind of guessing here because we don't see anything on the outside of the gun that can really tell us exactly what happened, but you should notice that that rate of fire kind of started to slow down a bit uh, when we got there towards the end. And I think the reason the rate of fire slowed down but didn't stop was because of the gas port itself physically enlarging. And what happens is that heat buildup causes that gas port to erode. Those hot, hot gases are going over the surface of that gas port and it's enlarging the gas port because all of that friction and all of that heat is allowing it to just erode away. And what happened was the gas port began to erode and erode and erode to the point where you weren't getting sufficient seal, sufficient pressure in the gas system to operate the gun anymore. The gas rings on the inside of the bolt are intact and perfectly serviceable and usable, okay? The whole upper assembly is completely usable. The bolt is usable. Uh, the charger handle's good. The gas tube is good. Now, the hand guard's obviously melted off. We knew that was going to happen. This barrel, basically, is cooked, but the barrel did not catastrophically fail. I could have sat there and let this gun cool down and ran it semi-auto all day long. No problem. Now, I'm not going to shoot this gun anymore because that barrel got really, really, really hot, and that's very, very dangerous. But you could have sat there and ran this thing literally like a bolt action. And I, I don't think there's any amount of fire at that point. If you were to just run it single shot and, and keep the gun uh, stroking along in a fight or, or whatever the case may be, I don't think there's any amount of that operation that would have caused this gun to just completely deadline, especially if the gun was allowed to cool a little bit in between that. Now, the gun's pretty much d uh, DOA. I mean, it's, 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 it's done, right? But basically, the gas port eroded. And this is the first time in these types of tests that we've seen the gas port simply erode away. Now, the POF tended to do that quite a bit. With the POF, we were getting kind of spurts of full auto fire, and then it stopped running full auto. Then it would only run as a semi-auto. So it just really goes to show how rugged these guns really are, and I'm very impressed at how well uh, the little smith here performed. All right, uh, you know, it did quite well. It is an entry-level gun. It's not a terribly expensive gun. It's not a cheap gun but it's definitely not one of the most expensive ones out there. So if you guys own an M&P, I mean, we've really said all along that this is a very good entry-level AR, and we've always known it because they shoot exceptionally well. Uh, they are optics ready, which makes them, uh, you know, very, very handy to be able to just drop your favorite optic on there and go. Um, but guys, that's insane. I can't believe it. There's your M&P uh, 15 II. It's the two model because it's got the forward assist. All right, it's not a standard sport. A true Smith & Wesson M&P Sport doesn't have a forward assist, all right? This does have the fixed milled trigger guard on the lower, but it has a forward assist and a dust cover. So that's how you know it's a two. Anyway, if you guys own an M&P Sport, hey, I, I think it's a good buy. You guys did great if you own one because you got a great entry-level gun that gives you a nice platform to build upon and change in the future as you see fit. Guys, thank you for watching today's video. We graciously appreciate your continued support. Uh, thanks to Michelle at Moss Pond for selling me the gun. Thanks to uh, the guys at Quiet Riot for bringing me the machine gun lower. And thank you guys for watching. Have a good one. See you next time.